Okay, in this screencast, we'll uh, start talking about composition and recursion. So um, let's take a broader picture on what um, uh, we're about to do. Uh, so uh, let's say that we have a uh, scientific uh, theory. And uh, we're trying to develop a scientific theory uh, in some domain. Uh, in our domain, it's um, uh, partially computable functions, right? partially recursive functions. But uh, any scientific theory uh, starts with a list of primitives. Uh, so for example, if we are interested in developing a theory, a geometrical, uh, two-dimensional geometry, right? Our primitives might be uh, dots. And then uh, having two dots, we can construct um, a line uh, and a segment and, uh, and so forth. So um, any theory uh, will have to have uh, a, um, a bunch of formally defined constructive uh, devices. Um, so constructed devices that um, uh, will operate on the primitives of the theory, right? Elements of the theory that cannot be divided into uh, further uh, primitives. And those constructed devices will mm, work on primitives and will take primitives and construct more uh, 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 complex structures uh, out of those uh, primitives. Um, so, say some complex structure. So, uh, constructing a line out of a uh, 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 out of uh, two uh, dots or uh, points, or um, a segment out of two points, right? A triangle um, from three points, and so forth. And and those complex structures may in turn become primitives, and um, be used in uh, 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 construct by constructive devices to construct even more complex. Uh, structures. So, um, uh, in our domain, uh, we are our primitives. What's what's the primitives? Well, we are operating with uh, functions, and uh, naturally, uh, we are interested in uh, coming up with a couple of constructed devices that um, allow us to uh, take functions and use our constructive devices to create uh, more complicated functions. So we'll take the functions that we already know and have, um, uh, uh, and uh, we'll construct uh, new functions. And composition is one of those constructive devices that uh, we can use. Or we can borrow it from mathematics, uh, because composition uh, is well defined in mathematics and we can uh, start using it and proving interesting computational properties of composition. So, um, uh, so what's the formal definition of composition? Let's say that f is a function of um, uh, k arguments or variables, k variables. And um, um, we have um, k functions, g1 through gk, and they are functions of uh, n variables each. And we will construct a new function of uh, n variables, h, x1 through xn, so we have n arguments, which will be the application of f to um, k applications of g's to n arguments each. That's all. Uh, the first argument is g1 applied to um, x1 through xn. The second is g2 applied to x1 through xn, and um, all the way down to uh, gk 
applied to uh, x1 through xn. So if H is so obtained from uh, uh, F and uh, K um, G's, then F is said to be obtained or constructive from F and uh, G's by uh, composition. F is obtained from these functions by composition. Okay, so um, this is theorem 1.1 from chapter 3 in um, uh, Davis Segal Waker's book, uh, Computability, Complexity, and Languages. And, and um, it proves a very interesting property of uh, comp composition. So, um, and uh, the theorem states that if H, that function from the previous definition, is uh, obtained, from um, F and then G1 through GK by uh, composition Composition, composition, and the functions from which uh, H is obtained, these F, G1, and um, through GK, happen to be partially computable or computable, so are partially computable then uh, H will be partially computable as well so computable comma uh, then then H is uh, make sure that this is a comma and uh, okay then H is uh, partially computable And uh, partially, the word partially can be parenthesized because the theorem is true whether that word is present or not. So if all of those functions are partially computable, then H is partially computable. If the functions F and G's are computable, then H is computable. Not just partially computable, but computable. So, and let's let's think about it, what, what it means. So we have F, uh, G1 through GK, and then we have a constructive device, composition, And so we, that constructive device receives all these functions and uh, produces a new function, h. And um, if these functions happen to be uh, partially computable or computable, computable, then composition preserves computability. Then h is guaranteed to be computable. If all of these functions, components out of which we're composing, h are computable, then composition preserves computability. And if, let's say, one of them is partially computable in the sense that it's not total, we can exhibit uh, some program, but um, uh, it's, not, it's not a total function, it's not going to be defined for some inputs, then, of course, H is going to be mm, partially uh, computable.
So let's um, sketch a proof. We're going to construct a program, right? Since we have macros now, so we're going to assign, uh, use our assignment macro uh, to assign uh, the results of uh, G1 applied to n arguments to uh, the variable Z1, and then all the way down to um, ZK, and the value of the of, of ZK will be the value of um, a GK applied to uh, n input arguments. And finally, the final standard of the program is um, going to be the application of F to Z1 through the, uh, ZK. So obviously, this program computes the composition of uh, F and G's, right? It computes H, so it is obvious through the code. Now, uh, so this is the program P. Okay. L program, and uh, well, I guess it's uh, um, uh, obvious through the code that um, if uh, G one and uh, uh, through G K and F. Uh, happen to be uh, computable, well, it means that they're guaranteed to return. Right? Their L programs already written for uh, for them. So then all those assignment statements are guaranteed to return, so P is guaranteed to return. It's a total function, and uh, it, is, it is defined for all the inputs. Then, uh, obviously, H is also computable, because P computes H. If, however, one of those happened to be um, partially computable in the sense that it's not total, either one of the G's or uh, F, um, or all of them are partially computable, then, of course, there will be inputs on which uh, either G's or F, uh, uh, G, one of the G's or F uh, will not be defined, and in that sense, uh, H will be partially computable because this is the program P. We have exhibited the program that computes P, but there will be inputs on which this program does not terminate. It's not is not defined uh, uh, and uh, then H is um, PC. Not politically correct, but partially computable. So, um, but um, in either case, uh, Psi of P of N is equal to h of x1 through xn.